Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the February 23rd uh, meeting of the Jackson Board of Selectmen at 4 o'clock. We'll start this meeting off at 4.03. Thanks for coming. We're glad you're here. Our uh, first order of business will be to uh, approve the minutes that we have on file here for two separate meetings that were both held on February 9th. Uh, the first set of minutes I'll entertain a motion to approve will be for the regular selectmen's meeting that day on February 9th. Are there one of you like to make a motion I to approve that those? Motion. And I'll second. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> either one of you have any uh, anything you noticed in those minutes nope. that you'd Not like good. to see edited or changed? <laughs> okay. Well, all those in favor of approving the minutes for the regular selectmen's board meeting on February 9th, say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Yep. You. And the second set of minutes, as I mentioned earlier, is for the uh, budget hearing that immediately followed that meeting, same date, February 9th. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the uh, selectmen's budget hearing minutes from February 9th. So moved. Second. Uh, excellent. Either one of you notice any uh, changes or edits that needed to take place? Nope. Okay. Very good. All those in favor of approving the, the minutes for the uh, budget hearing on February 9th as written, say aye. 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 Very good. Aye, aye, aye. And next up is an update on action items. We did not have any action items uh, from the last meeting uh, before we start off with uh, um, announcing the upcoming meeting dates. Is there anything that uh, either one of you can think of you want to add to action items between now and the next meeting? <coughs> pretty much caught up with stuff? I think so. Okay, great. Very good. Then I will mention upcoming meetings, FYI. <laughs> Our next regular meeting will be on Thursday, February 9th, here at 4 o'clock in this room. March 9th. March 9th. What did I say? February? <laughs> Get your head together. Do we have a test to see if you were awake out there? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, town elections are Tuesday, March 14th. And polls open at 8 and they close at 7 p.m. And that's at the Whitney Center. Our annual town meeting is Thursday, March 16th. And that will also be at the Whitney Center. That meeting starts at 7 o'clock. And uh, then we are, our next regular meeting after that will be on Thursday, March 30th at 4 p.m. And our uh, April uh, meeting right now is scheduled for Thursday, April 27th, right here at 4 p.m. Well, that's what we've got coming up on the uh, meeting slate. That takes us right to public comments. Next item on the agenda. Anybody have any comments? Once, twice. Fair enough. We will move to building inspector's report. <coughs> Kevin, come on up and join us and uh, tell us what you know. Well, do we have any new permits? None. Nope. None. Quiet, but wow. there's a lot of stuff coming up. I know that. But people have been calling me. So, but I have something about the, um, um, this kind of came across when I was kind of doing the inspection down at the um, Nesselbrook. It has to do with it. They put a gate in down there. And um, you know, it's kind of a long story, but um, I asked if the gate was ever closed. And I guess some of the workers down told me that during the month of December it was closed and some other times it was closed. And I said, well, does the fire department know about it? Because that was the agreement to at least tell the chief, you know, to have the code. 
And they said, no, they never, no one ever told them. But talking to Jay, they said that the, um, the code's 911. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if that's going to get changed or not. <laughs> so anyway, Jay called down there and found out, sure enough, during the months of December, um, especially at nighttime, they closed the gate. And um, got to get in there. So um, anyway, looking at the, I know there's an RSA about, um, about gates, and that's another thing. That's a class six road, believe it or not, after mm -hmm. the, there was a first set of gates, the pillars are still there, but the gates are gone. Mm -hmm. Now there's a gate about another 50 feet down the road, a new gate. And um, that's the class six road that goes all the way in there and up to the new condos or the, the older condos. So anyway, um, I think when these places sell up there, there's probably, a, they're gonna be closing that gate more often. I mean, we don't know that, but anyway, if you look at the RSA, they're not allowed to have, they're, not allowed to have that locked. There's a, um, actually I hand it out to you. So, uh, there's an RSA in the state about it. Um, about you can close the gate, but it can't be locked to the public. Hmm. And I don't think, and that's another thing, I don't even think the ambulance knew about it. I know they've been down there for um, medical calls for the, uh, the ice skating rink. Um, but at any given time, I don't think the gate was closed, but at least they know. Uh, what about other class six roads in town? Like the same ending? thing. You can, if you read it, it's all has to do about maintaining. If the town maintains it for a certain amount of time, it reverts back to a class five. But if it's like closed during the winter, um, then they're not maintaining it all the time. Um, but if you have a class six road, you, you know, if someone puts a chain across it, I mean, it goes way back to the days when people had livestock. They used to keep their horses in or mm -hmm. cows or goats, but the public still had the right to open that gate and go up that class six road. Shall but, be capable of being opened and reclosed by highway users. Right. And I don't know, you know, it's not like down there. It's sometimes there's different people in charge, it seems like to me too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Robert Sears there sometimes a lot. He's got a bunch of workers. Uh, now there's, what, there's 14 units being converted to seven units, and um, I think one or two are for sale right now. You know, I think eventually when they do sell, you know, they're going to have seven new owners up there. I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know if they you know, think that, well, we can close the gate and keep the public out of here, and according to this RSA, you know. Well, they can't keep people off of the Class 6 road. Because that is a town right of way. Mm -hmm. So I think as it reads, is subject to gates and bars. Right. So a bar gate was to keep animals in. Mm -hmm. If you have a swing gate, which is fine, I mean, but you, it can't be locked, right. as you said. Yeah, and there's a keypad there. So I don't know what the, I don't know if it's, we should write a letter to them just to well, give them a Well, if it's just up. a push button that opens the gate, fine. Right, when it's in, yeah. If I want to go in there, not that I do, but right. I mean, if I wanted to use that class six road mm -hmm. to do something, you can go in and out. Um, it's not supposed to be walked. Right, right. And I know the police were up there, well, the fire department and police were up there a couple of weeks ago for alarm activation at the very top. Mm -hmm. um, the gate happened to be open. And I, and I guess when the gate's locked, if you push 911, it opens. <laughs> If you walk around the back side and push some other button, it opens. Otherwise, you need the code. So that's that's different than uh, being uh, highway users being capable of opening and right. closing the gate. Right. So, so I don't know. Thoughts, John? No. I think a, a letter sounds like a good idea. Yeah, okay. Draft a letter yeah. and um, copy them. The RSA with the RSA. Yep. Um, let them know that it's required to be something any user can open and reclose 24 7. Right. Right? Is that? that yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's it's pretty stated, pretty, so, pretty clear in the RSA. If you guys want to craft some language and we'll all get a crack at edits, yeah. and then when we're happy with it, we'll sign off on it and get it out. And it's yeah. probably just not something they weren't aware of. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I, I think they weren't aware of it, but there's some 911 address problems there, too. Same thing, when we went to, 
There used to be a number 86 to this call the other night, which was like two weeks ago, for alarm activation. And the number's gone now. I don't know who took the number down. But I contacted the new owner, and he's fine about getting a new number up. And actually, I told him to put it down at the end of his driveway to get, to get it posted. Now, the other, all those new, those older um, units that are all being sold, those are all numbered in the 200s. The numbers don't even correspond to nine, the 911 address. So I called up down to Concord and uh, talked to, uh, I think it was in Jen, and we went over the whole place. And, and a lot of other buildings aren't here aren't numbered either. And um, going back to when they came in here for that subdivision approval, I think that was one of the Criteria. Um, yeah, to get everything numbered down there. So I talked to usually um, Robert Sears' handyman down there. I talked to him and usually things get done or whatever, but this still hasn't been done. Um, I finally got a hold of Robert Sears two days ago and I <coughs> said, you know, this has to be done. And, um, you know, otherwise, you know, if we send you a letter, we can find you within six months or whatever. But supposedly he said, well, I'm going to come up next week. Um, if we want to meet, you know, I'll go over it and I, I, I'm, I'll, I'll meet with them. What's to meet about? Get the numbers on there. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Should we just send them the letter and then I still should meet? I mean, I don't well, know. I, I, I guess that's frustrating that you don't know who's in charge because it seems like there should be an operations manager. Right. There's, I can't see what's name, Kurt. Kurt, There's yeah. Kurt, right. I, I, I think the fire chief knows him very well. I don't know to talk to him about. I mean, yeah. someone goes to a hardware store for an app, you know, so yeah. you pick up the numbers, come back with a screw gun. You have it done in two now hours. The numbers have been reassigned, right? They've all been assigned, okay. right? And yeah. actually, the uh, talking to um, uh, eight people down in Concord about it, you know, they, by law, you know, the, the building that burnt down, that should be numbered. There should be a number in that area. It's true. It's a big area. People hang out there. Mm -hmm. It should be like we have down at the park. We have numbers. Mm -hmm. Just to know, you know, Location. someone calls. Yeah. Um, it, it happens. We just had it happen, uh, that was a couple weeks ago, up on Route 16. Someone came out. Their car was gone. The car got towed because of, it was parked because of snowing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but they didn't know where they were. They had to go out to the road and find a mile marker. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. and finally called the police, but yeah. you know, if it was like metal somewhere metal between mile two and three or something. <laughs> yeah. But people don't realize if it's a medical emergency, there's a major delay there. Right. You know, and so we, we got a letter going out to that, those people too. We've talked about this and we've made numerous attempts. Yeah. Um, to get everybody in the compliance. Right. Really, there are no other ideas you have that were missing. Are there? Just, no, it's usually usually just call you know, usually you can get actually get a hold of the, the person and talk to them. But usually within a couple of weeks usually something happens. Usually. Yeah. So um, yeah. I think the most extreme thing you could do is put the letters the numbers up yourself. <laughs> and, you know, no, I charge them for it. You know, yeah. just say, they came yeah, down to it. Yeah. Here's a fifty dollar, you know, charge because mm -hmm. you don't have your uh, house number up and you need it. Right. So there it is. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll send out the, the letter so it's on file, and within six months yeah, right. you can find them. I don't know how that would go, but I, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't even give them six months. Well, right. It's not, that, it's not that difficult to do. No, it's not. But I think the town ordinance, I think if you can read it, I think it's six months, you know, from notification of, of yeah, official notification. notification so. Well, it's a life safety issue. Well, it is. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so are you planning on scheduling a meeting with Bob? Yes, yeah, yeah definitely. When he comes up. Yeah, yeah. And you don't know when, though? No, he said he might be up here earlier next week. Next week so. so you're just going to try and catch him? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll call him. Keep calling him. I have his number, so. He does answer his phone. Can, can we put that on your uh, agenda for the next week? We minutes? can. Okay. Yep. <coughs> All right. Great. Just keep us posted on that. Okay, I will. Yes, yeah, for sure. The gate. That's important. Yeah. I mean, we, we've got what we need right now, Julie, yeah. correct? To, to draft a letter and get Yeah, for the out. gate at least, yeah. So yeah. And then, us, and then it's because there's two separate issues, kind of. Yeah, there is. Three right. numbers. So. Yep. Great. Because right. I can't believe they, you know, they'd be happy to get into com compliance and just I hope so. Yeah. Um, haven't, haven't. So yeah. 
What else? I had a question oh. about the uh, gazebo at uh, Wentworth below the falls. Yep. I know a little bit about that. Yep. Was it ever permitted? No, I never found a permit for that. And it looked, How long has it been there? Because um, I know a, um, a resident up there called me about it, and I did a little research on it. Mm -hmm. And um, it seems like it's maybe it's been up there like seven years, maybe. And it just all of a sudden appeared one day. Yeah. And if you go into their into into their um, their deed and rules and regulations from all that, it, there's a thing in there about. Um, about all the owners like kind of voting on this, to, you know, anything like that to happen, you have to get the okay from the board. Yeah. You know? All right. So that I don't think. But they should be. also have a building permit. But if it's within seventy-five feet of the uh, river, well, that's a, it's in the uh, yeah wild and scenic. Yeah. So it shouldn't be there. That's. There's a thing in the wild and scenic about that, and I figure well, this it does mention shelters. Shelters okay. are permittable, but it should have been permitted. Permitted, right? Yeah. So, um, All right. well, as this thing with the uh, landowner develops, I'd like to just keep up with. Oh, okay. What you know about it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'll talk to him because he said that at some point they were going to. Uh, I guess it was between the condo association, the Wentworth, and and him. Um, and they were working on it. That's the last I heard. So I kind of mm -hmm. fell out of the the, uh, the loop. Yeah. So, but I'm gonna call and find out. And yeah. Guys up there. Yeah. Well, we don't have any other information than that. But it seems like there are competing interests up there. And uh, yeah. Yeah. There is. Yeah. That's a town deeded right away. away. Is that That's another question because at one point the town used to cut the grass and weed whack and everything, and then that all stopped. And then I, you know, I think the Wentworth was keeping um, care of it. And they kind of they kind of took it over. And if you look at the, if you actually look at the maps, I think it's deeded. The land's deeded actually to the Wentworth. It's there's a um, I forgot what the word is. It's, it's not a sublot. It's something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets complicated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds messy, and yeah, yeah. And it's so, some of the wording of it here. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I looked through all the files on it. Yeah. You can spend a lot of time on it. <laughs> yeah. Do we have next something. steps on that, or there? I think the thing is to talk to talk to the the, the, the people who were notified me of this and see where they are with it. The condominium association. Yeah, no, it was um, one of the homeowners up there. Uh -huh. um, it had to do with that being on the septic system and right. um, you know large gatherings of people on the weekends on a Saturday for like an hour or so because of the weddings they had there. Um, setting up chairs, um, having vehicles pulling there, like a pickup truck um, to set up all the chairs and pick up all the chairs. Um, I guess there's rocks now they can't get through or something. <laughs> so, but. Um, yeah, it really has to do with the, uh, like a civil issue almost with the condo association. Okay. But, I'll, but I'll make a telephone call, find out what's going on. Yeah. Yep. Thank yeah. you. Okay. All right. So anything else, uh, Dick? John? Mm -hmm. Good. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, moving on to new business, we've got two things in the new business packet, I think. First is the liquor license request for the uh, Thornhill Inn. <coughs> and this is a uh, change of uh, owners. Just transferring the license over. We talked about this at the last meeting, didn't we? Or didn't I don't think so. It's okay. just a regular transfer, isn't it? Yes. 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 There, Julie was looking for a deed on it, but they're actually just managing the inn. Right. They need to have it in their name. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's just so a, yeah. Transfer yeah. Of, a transfer of uh, title, if you will. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, no expansion on the liquor license yeah. or yeah. anything else on that. So um, entertain a... 
Motion to uh, approve transferring the, uh, the liquor license over to the new management team. I make that motion. A second. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts either one of you have on this? No. Nope. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Now being managed by Steve Lambert. Steve Lambert. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Next up, request uh, for monthly budget status updates, and that was made by. George, who's here tonight, Howard, um, did you get a copy of his I saw it, but I didn't get it. request? Okay, so uh, the request, as I understand it, and we can get some clarification from George on it, is that uh, he'd like to see the budget uh, produced and gone over monthly at, at one of our meetings. So, did you get a chance to go through that, Dick? I did. Okay. Either one of you have any thoughts on that, or shall we uh, ask George for clarification? Yeah, well, that be the, I'd yeah. like to know what, what is your question? Okay. What would you like out of this discussion? Well, I, I thought it was pretty simple, but anyway, if you look at your proposed budget, you can take each one of those uh, cost centers, as I would call them, and provide a what was approved for the budget? What is spent and the percentage? Or you can take just the major ones, such as fire, police, fire, those sort of things. Would you look at this document and see if this is what you're looking for? Yeah. Yeah. Now you're going to make me put on my glasses. I have to go. You don't need all these individual areas, just the major areas. But this is what comes right out of the computer. Yeah. This is easy to That's create. what I understand. On the QuickBooks, it's easy to do. That's why I asked for it. But we're not going to change our format. That's easy. I mean, I can, is this what you want? Uh, Although it, it does have the individual uh, line items. So this tells me you haven't spent anything to date. As, as, as I read this, uh, if that's appropriated, the budget, see your budget shows zero and you're over budget. And so it, what I said in the piece of paper was, what is, here's the approved budget, here's your expended, and here's the percent. Simple. And as far as okay. changing formats, formats are pretty easy. To well, no, if that's what we're using, that's what we're using. I mean, well, if you want to publish that every month, that's fine. But it's well, month, we do it every week. Come in every month, if that's what you would like to do. No, and I'm not saying come in. I'm saying make this part of your agenda and say, here's where we are, budget wise. That's all. The schools do that. Okay, so you would like us to go to the or the bottom line and say we spent forty percent for of each. Minute. You can detail it as much as you want as far as items, yeah. or you can con consolidate them by major cost centers, yeah. whichever is easier. Okay. All I'm looking for is here's what we have for say the highway department. Here's what we appropriated. Here's what we spent today. Here's the percentage. Well, I think what Dick is saying, this is how we manage our budget. This yeah. is the software we already use, and we print that I out. I understand that, Bob. Any, but what I'm, I'm saying sorry, is... And that we print that out anytime anybody wants to request that information. I'm just saying that's your monthly meeting. 
Just yeah. provide it. I don't want to stop down here every day and say, what's the budget? That doesn't make Not sense. Not every day, but even Why once a month. When in theory, anyway. No, 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 no. I'm asking you to provide this as a service to Should you. we put it on the e-news? Should we put it on I would put it at least on your website. You put minutes in the agenda yeah. and then what's that? we can do. I'm asking you. No, 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 no. That's okay. I'm not upset. I think it'd just be very time consuming to go through. Even if you did it in departments, it'd be very time consuming to do it every week or month or meeting or whatever we decide to do, where we could just post that on the website and everybody could go to it and look at it in detail. Not everyone has a computer. No, I'm one of those. But I mean, I could if I wanted to. I mean, if I'm, if I'm really desired to. You're missing my point. Then how are they going to get the information if they don't either come into a meeting? Right. And get it, or get it off the e-news. No, you publish minutes. They're on the wall. They're in various places. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Okay, they'll, they'll be here. Okay, so we, you don't have to ask for it. We'll just put it up on the bulletin board. But as part of the standing agenda item for your meeting, that's all I'm saying. Now, how you distribute them? There's a variety of ways. Right. So. But the idea that I come in and knock on the door and say, can I have the info? I don't think so, really. I think it's part of, you talk about all the other items during the meetings. These are things, and the rationale is, the better we all understand the budget, the easier it is to ask coherent questions mm -hmm. and so forth. That's, it's part of an education thing. All right, thanks, George. All okay. right, appreciate it. So what are we going to do? Well, uh, I guess we'll have a discussion about it. Okay. I think the questions I had for both of you were, is, Can I see a copy is this something that you feel is necessary to put on a, an agenda item monthly and go over? I think that, uh, you know, in my mind, you know, the voters appropriate the budget, the budget is managed, and, uh, you know, the budget has always been managed responsibly, and the way we've gotten that information out to voters has always been something that seems to be satisfactory to the legislative body. So I think any time we get involved in making changes that don't seem to be necessary, we end up less efficient rather than more. And I think that's my biggest concern, John and Dick, is that if we start layering different things into how we operate, uh, we'll decrease our ability to be efficient, not increase it. And we've got department heads that are capable of managing budgets. Uh, a lot of these budgets are managed in cycles. We don't have one twelfth of a line item of a budget being used every month. We may purchase sand. half of our sand in one month, and that might look alarming to somebody that doesn't understand it, yet that information is always available to the public. And so I guess I'm wondering what your two thoughts are about the fact that if it's not broke, what, what is it we want to fix? Well, I don't mind both posting this physically here or wherever and put it on the e-news so that it's available. Okay. I'm not sure what the discussion at any town, at any selectman's meeting would cover, uh, unless you got it and then had a question on an area of expenditures. And what are your thoughts, John? Uh, following up on what Dick said, I mean, if we have it posted right out here, you could view it prior to the meeting and come in and say, hey, we're probably over budget and sand. Mm -hmm. You know, that could be right there, that information's right there. I just did a quick count of just the totals of the departments. It was 33 items that we would be reporting on every month. And I think this is, when I said this, something that's already in print, it's again, we're, you know, giving information out mm -hmm. that can be found pretty easily. Okay. Um, you know, and again, I, don't, I, th I think it's a great idea to put it on e-news. I don't have a problem doing that. And maybe we can do it by department instead of doing like a breakdown of individual that's items. There. I don't know how many items are there, but that's true. Yeah, no, we could do it by department. And then, and then post that summary sheet on e-news if that helps yeah. people out. Well, all right. That's well. exactly what I just got done talking about. Main shares, cost centers, departments, however, whatever. For instance, but I think the idea that it's available to lose 
This is the only forum on a regular basis where we can ask questions of you folks how we can spend our money. But couldn't you just go right out there? No, 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 no. I said a forum where we can ask you folks. But that's why we're saying, okay, you can come in. Once you have this information, hopefully before a meeting, whether it came to you from E! News or if you came here and got it or where it came from, but then you could, you know, look through the budget and then have your question, if there was a question. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what I'd like to do then. I'll meet you halfway. You say you can do it by department? Just by the gross numbers? Mm -hmm. All right, put that out on E! News and on your website as part of the minutes, you know, at that same time. Let's try that. We'll, yeah. put, we'll put a poster right out here, too. Okay. Yeah, I think put a hard copy out here yeah. and post it because it's easy enough to, you know, yes. do. And we'll do it by... Monthly? Are you talking that, about that? That would be fine. Monthly would be fine. Okay. I'm pretty flexible. We'll so try it out. We can work with you. Thank you. Excellent. You're welcome. Thank you. That's it for new business. Ooh, old business. We took the transfer station off because there's really yeah, no there's updates nothing going on, on that there, until yeah. spring breaks. Nope. So uh, don't have anything uh, carried over from old business. Although I guess we've got a line on a new backhoe, though. Okay, yeah. Which is good news. Yeah. I don't know if you saw my response to that, but I, I thought it'd be important for Pat Kelly to take a look oh, at that absolutely. information when it comes in. Absolutely. Have him hook up with Travis. Yeah. Uh, Julie, can you make sure that gets to, to Bartlett, to Brenda over there, that um, when Travis gets the specs mm -hmm. or whatever he's waiting on, yeah. uh, if he could uh, share those with uh, Pat. Um, Jay can pay in on that as well, I would think. Would you, Jay? On that. Okay. Put in some information on back of the Transfer station back home. You Found a gem somewhere. Huh. <laughs> if you could take a look at this out of that, I'd be appreciated. I believe it is. Yeah, yeah. Good used. Apparently. Mm -hmm. We didn't get, wait, what we got was an email from Brenda, so we didn't get yeah. any specifics. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, um, the yeah. rundown of it was coming, coming uh, Travis's way. So, great. Okay. Public comments? Back to the last public comment portion of the meeting. George. Yeah, I, I looked at on the, the Hank, but on the minutes of the last of your uh, February 9th meeting, mm -hmm. and, and particularly at the Warren article discussion, that I didn't understand the vote on the tech, on the all this tax credit. You two declined to vote. Why? I did not decline to vote. I abstained. The state and uh, there's a difference there. And I uh, got that um, Warren article on the last day that was due. And it was not a Warren article that anybody at the budget hearing number one had an opportunity to look at or ask questions about. So came in too late. We didn't know, we didn't at that time have DRA uh, uh, feedback on whether the, uh, the language was valid. There were some questions they had about whether the, whether the Warren article would be valid if it was voted on based on the language that was in there. So I typically would never see myself supporting a Warren article if I wasn't, wasn't confident that the language was going to be valid and didn't have enough time to address it, ask questions, look at concerns. I mean, it's a it's a it's a Warren article that is before some towns and not others. Why uh, some of it's you know it's our understanding is going in front of some towns as petitioned. Uh, some towns are are having it go through selectmen. Why we had we had no time to really uh, get any answers to questions like that before we were expected to weigh in. So that's why I abstained. For me, it was money. I didn't know how much was actually going to be uh, tax dollars defer, deferred because of it. So I just wanted to know what the dollar figure was more than anything else. That was my concern. I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to it at all. Let, let me address that a little bit then. I meant the schedule to, 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 to submit more articles. I meant that. Now, if you couldn't process stuff in that time frame, then we ought to have a different suspense date. Secondary, 
Second. A different, I didn't. You, you should move the data that they had to receive it earlier. But I met the date, assuming, rightly or wrongly, that that was in, you know, if you meet the date, all these questions you're bringing up would be taken care of. Uh, secondly, I would see if there's a question on the legality of it. Uh, we have a town attorney that we use on a regular basis. So that's, by meeting the date, I had anticipated that those things would be covered. It wasn't our town attorney, it's the DRA that makes a decision on the wording of any article. But I'm not the lawyer. That's what I, I'm, I'm just saying, just for your own <laughs> clarification. So, yeah. yes, we and we ran into this with the planning board. Um, and we have to get all these things in earlier. And we, we have to, we're, I'm telling you, we're, you know, learning this stuff. We have to get this stuff in earlier so that there is the time, because we have no idea what the impact, of course, I voted for it, I'm a veteran, I'm <laughs> vote my own interests. I'm not sure how many veterans that never served in a conflict are in town reservists or whatever. Um, so I had no idea what the impact was uh, on our tax base. But uh, I, f I think I feel the same way you do, that uh, people that have served um, should be rewarded somehow or acknowledged. And this was a nice way to do it. But I understand what uh, my fellow selectmen their reservations about, you know, how does this affect everybody, everybody in town? Uh, you know, because we still have to raise the same amount of money, so if there are these veterans that are not going to pay $500 uh, of their assessed value, um, how is that going to impact us? I don't think it's going to adversely impact the rest of the town by that much. I don't think there are that many um, veterans that don't, uh, have, have not served during a conflict. Well, if I can, I'd like to address some of that. Let me, let me just go around for public comments here, and we'll, we'll loop around if you have more comments okay. to make. Are there any other public comments from anybody before we... Go back to George one time. Okay, go ahead, George. Okay. The current rules that we operate under were adopted by the town. And that's the one that covered the conflicts that you're in and so forth. And uh, the Persian Gulf tonight and so forth. But then the, the kind of the catch-all thing it talks about any war, uh, any other war or armed conflict has occurred since 1975 in which the Risen Fern and Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal or a Theater Operations Medal. Well, today, uh, in fact, I ran across one veteran from the side of the war article that did not meet the requirements of this current RSA. Today, we, uh, since the Gulf War, we have continued to have forces, and we're not at peace. There was a Congress Sun article talking about peacetime veterans. We haven't been at peace since the Gulf War. So we have people deployed everywhere. Mm -hmm. Our forces are down to less than 0.5% of a total population. And so we have a small force deployed in a number of places in conflicts that aren't identified and we surged from here to there, from Somalia to the middle of Africa to the South China Sea. And so the, the operations tempo is as high as it's ever been. And so with a smaller percentage of our population taking on this load, we now have a group of veterans who do not meet the expeditionary force because there are none. But the sacrifice, particularly veterans and families, go through are at a lot higher than ever because of the demands we put on them. And equally important is 
that the population has not much of an idea of what they go through or any sacrifice they Everyone else's lifestyle stays the same. And what this uh, new RSA says is that any veteran that served for 90 days honorably and was honorably separated, regardless of whatever I enlisted, then qualifies. Because of the field, look at what we've been doing for the last 20 plus years, that, that fits just about all. The younger veterans, the ones that we are, are uh, trying to help out because of this, the current rules. Now you ask, how is the doctor? The RSA, I forget that I have it here, but the exact number says, here's how you adopt these things. One is by one article. That's why we do it that way. It's an RSA requirement. So what I would say is, uh, is this, this will be on the warrant, as I understand it. Mm -hmm. Then do me the favor of having your legal readers look at it and find out if it is legal, we'll press on. If it isn't, they're forcing a new point. Well, whether the language is valid or not, it will be on the warrant article. Well, I understand that. That's it's, all it's, all already on the, it's already going to be voted on. Yep. So, uh, I'm saying that town meeting. Right, yeah, right. It's gone to, to the printer. Uh, I understand that. The Department but, of Revenue Administration this time of the year is pretty backed up. And so I that can't. and so that's why we don't get immediate answers when we ask them questions this time of year. We'll, we'll, we're working hard to make sure we get all the questions answered for the, for the warrant articles that came in at the very end that were um, presented by uh, uh, signatures. So, okay. uh, any final thoughts, John? No, can I just add my last thing I was going to say? Hold on a second. Um, okay. Final thoughts, Dick? No, I'm listening. Okay, Sorry. go ahead. As far as the cost of the town, I would think it's more appropriate to change the amount that's provided to all the veterans than to separate the cost requirement out to who's eligible and who isn't. Because we have the opportunity at town level to say how much of a tax credit you want to provide. So if it becomes a budgetary issue, I would think you would want to address all veterans the same and use that as the, as the throttle if that's the concern of tax. And we are required to treat all veterans the same, whether they've served in a conflict or not. The amount must be the same. We can't have one amount for one. For, for a vet that served in a conflict and one that didn't. So we, we did our homework and we looked into that and we understand that the RSA changed in August and that's why these Warren articles have come out now and uh, there's a handful of towns along with ours that are going to have uh, Warren articles that have been presented by signatures and there's a handful of towns that have uh, had these Warren articles approved by uh, boards of selectmen, not many, I would imagine there'll be more uh, next year. So, so um, where do we leave it? Your, your, the, the warrant article that you presented with signatures is going to be on the town warrant. Okay. That's, that hasn't changed. Does it change your position? I'm way, I, I, I don't have enough information to do anything other than abstain right now. Once we get language that says that the language is valid, that's going to be really helpful for both of the Warren articles. Well, that leaves the voter in suspense as if I vote for something that's turned around not to be valid. Why don't we know that ahead of time? Well, it will like, give the mandate for if, if we didn't get the words right, we'll get the words right. But if we have this vote, then we have the mandate to go ahead, do the homework, and we'll get it on the Warren as soon as we can. So I, I don't think it's a, a wasted vote. I think that will uh, show, excuse me? No, go ahead. No, what I was talking about was the vote at town meeting. That's, the That's what I'm talking about. That vote will show the mandate to the selectmen that this is the will of the town. Okay. We'll go from there. Yeah. Okay. If, if it works out that we didn't word it right, we'll word it right. We'll make we'll it, right. it right. We'll, we'll make it right. right. Okay. We'll make it work. Fair enough. You're welcome. More comments? Choice. Choice. Just 
out of curiosity, what is the date by which a warrant has to be presented to to the town, uh, to you, or to well, the cutoff is, to be on is the, a date in uh, what, February. It's February 9th. There's a February date. Yeah. Uh, it does not mean that the state's going to be in a position to review warrants that are submitted on February 9th and give you an answer by by your March meeting. That's so that's the rub. Is it always the same? So that's why. Certain amount of days before your town meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. All but that's, it's, that's pretty yeah, close. It's pretty mm -hmm. very close. Yeah. Right. Other comments? All right. Uh, that's the last item on the agenda. Unless either one of you have any other thoughts. Can I put my hat on now? Yes, you may. <laughs> you could have had it on earlier, yeah, too. Totally. John, John's never comes on. <laughs> so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, nice. I will second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all.